What inspires author Nicole Luongo? Let's find out. But before we do, if you love books and the stories behind them, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Interviews are posted the second Tuesday and fourth Tuesday of every month, and you don't want to miss out. Hi, my name is Crystal Fletcher, and welcome to this week's episode of All About Canadian Books. I'm very excited. This week's guest is author Nicole Luongo. Nicole holds a bachelor's and master's degree in sociology from the University of British Columbia and approximately 1 60th of a PhD from the University of Oxford. She is currently figuring out what she likes. We'll be discussing Nicole's memoir, The Becoming, which was just recently published by Anana Publications. The Becoming is a brutal account of mental illness by a woman who doesn't believe in mental illness. As the author embarks on a PhD at the University of Oxford, a lifetime of addiction, eating disorders, and trauma accumulates in an explosive hospital stay that sees her achieve a liberation through psychosis. Her journey from terror to acceptance is grueling, and she makes meaning of it by weaving reflective narrative with classic and nascent scholarship. Welcome to All About Canadian Books, Nicole. Hi, thank you for having me. Oh, it's my pleasure. So, Nicole, what what inspires you? Oh boy, that's that's a big question. Um, I mean, in the context of this book in particular, really just um, kind of this unrelenting need to be heard, um, which, you know, can be interpreted, I guess, as a bit of self-absorption, but having lived through a lot of kind of structural and systemic uh, disenfranchisement and also observing the same uh, of my peers, you know, uh, kind of misconceptions around what our experiences actually are and conflicting interpretations. Uh, of our motivations have been a big kind of influence in my life and, and motivating force. Okay. So I am, I'm in awe of your memoir. Like you really take readers into your, into your head, into your heart, um, you know, from addiction, eating disorders, homeless, your stay in the hospital. It's very honest. It's very brave. Uh, Nicole, when did you think I've got to write this down. I've, I've got to make a book of my experience. Um, I mean, it was a, a fairly unconventional process. You know, part of the text does include some of the writing I did while uh, in hospital this particular time. Mm -hmm. uh, and I certainly wasn't considering writing a book at that point, but shortly thereafter, after I, you know, returned very abruptly to Canada, um, I, I continued writing and uh, probably within a few days of that, it, it kind of occurred to me that I was beginning a book, uh, but I didn't, I didn't necessarily sit down and have a, a single, you know, reflective period where I decided to write it. It, it was just happening. <laughs> <laughs> and I found the excerpts from your stay in the hospital ex extremely powerful. Thanks. Now, your book explores what does it mean to be normal and should we be sane in an insane world? Can you provide our viewers with some insight in, as to why you don't believe in mental illness? Yeah, I mean, again, another big question. Um, you know, I'm, I'm trained in medical sociology um, and I, I found kind of that field of study after spending many years being told in no uncertain terms that I am seriously mentally ill mm -hmm. uh, and that I have lifelong diseases that will require constant kind of management and uh, self-surveillance. Um, and, you know, that was really disempowering for me, yeah. um, both in the way that it constructed kind of this subjectivity or selfhood that constantly felt as I was responding from a place of deficit and in just very literal terms, I have had many instances of involuntary psychiatric uh, incarceration and homelessness and things like that. Um, 
And so, yeah, I, I found medical sociology and, you know, was introduced to alternative paradigms through which to kind of interpret my experience of self and my, uh, the, the ways I've lived in society. Um, and so through that journey and, you know, exploring lots of different theory and applying it to, to my own uh, experience, I have come to conclude that, you know, uh, because normal doesn't really exist, mental illness, which implies like a deviation from normal is also very ambiguous. That's not to say people don't suffer because I certainly have. Um, but this idea that there's this kind of narrow category of normal that we should aspire to be in is obviously a very limiting. Mm -hmm. And we love, we love to put people in a box and give people a label, mm -hmm. don't we? Yeah. 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 I mean, that's what psychiatry is, is predicated on. Um, yeah. Now, as a reader, I was I was so invested in, in your journey to liberation, Nicole. Um, how would you describe yourself today? I mean, liberated, sure, in some ways. Um, I'm not going to, to lie and say I don't still struggle because, you know, the way I exist in the world is several standard deviations away from the mean is how I put it in terms of how I, I process stimuli and yeah. the ongoing relationship I have with food that's very tumultuous. So I'm not you know, I would be absolutely uh, dishonest if I said, you know, I'm just healthy, happy and healthy and all these things. But yeah. I also uh, yeah. have, you know, as the book demonstrates, arrived in a place where I, I accept that that might not be um, the be all and end all. So I'm, I'm well enough. I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> Great. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and what, um, what advice would you have for for other people who are trying to find their place in this world, Nicole? Um, I mean, the, the most kind of meaning and satisfaction I have found is through like activism and advocacy. Um, you know, writing the book itself was a very solitary process and much of my life has been, you know, been imbued with the feeling of alienation. Mm -hmm. um, and so connecting with folks who are maybe marginalized in similar ways um, and kind of uniting around wanting to see our uh, ability to, to live uh, improve has, yeah. has been really important for me. Yeah. And in your bio, I really like you say um, you're figuring out what you like. So what have you figured out thus far? Boy, um, aside from, yeah, those things that kind of give me meaning and purpose, um, I've gone into plants lately ah, I um, love it. for the first time. Yeah, I think that's kind of like the millennial, you know, substitute for uh, being able to afford a house and have kids. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm taking care of some really great plants. Um, yeah, and, uh, you know, I, I have a job that, again, does feel... Um, that I'm tentatively optimistic could produce some some decent outcomes. Um, and yeah, that's I guess that's it. That's fantastic. And what are what are you currently working on right now? Like I know the memoir has just come out, but what what's next for you, Nicole? Yeah. Um, so like I said, I'm I'm working in drug policy and I'm kind of sketching out a second book. Um, oh, okay. Not not in an identical way to the first, but as informally um, that will uh, relate more explicitly to what gets labeled as substance use disorder or addiction. Mm -hmm. um, ideally, you know, it'll be for folks uh, who maybe don't have access to um, the same level of education that I have and have spent their lives being told again, you know, you're, you're sick and diseased and uh, it's essentially your fault. Um, so yeah, there's that. And, uh, yeah, I guess, I guess that's about it. Nicole, a great big thank you for being a guest today on All About Canadian Books. I so appreciate you coming and talking about your memoir, The Becoming. I highly recommend it. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for having me.
It's a pleasure. And I will put for our viewers, I'll put links down below in the description box so you can purchase a copy of Nicole's memoir, The Becoming, and also um, learn even more about her. So thank you and be sure to come back in a couple of weeks.